Matthias, I give you the floor. Okay, thank you, Anton. Thanks a lot uh, for the organizer uh, for inviting me to give this talk. And uh, well, I'm happy to tell you a bit about the the, the objects I'm studying uh, in the recent years and uh, some of my the, the, the collaborations are, I have been writing with uh, some colleagues. So first of all, uh, I would like to take a second to remember uh, Afonso Gracia Sass, who I was very sad to know that uh, he died of COVID last year. He was still very young. And his work, his joint work uh, uh, with Rush, with Rush and Meta, uh, is in the core of many of the things I'm going to tell you today. So uh, I structured the, the, the talk as follows. I'm going to tell you a bit about uh, uh, I mean, some motivation from Poisson geometry, we're in a global Poisson seminar. And um, what, uh, what is the role of these objects, vector bundles over group points, algeroids, and differentiable stacks? Uh, what, uh, how do they relate with the Poisson and Dirac geometry? And then I will focus in studying vector bundles over Lie group points, VB group points, uh, along three. Uh, lines, let's say. One is the, the behavior of these VB groupoids uh, under differentiation and integration, what we might call uh, Lie theory of vector bundles. Then I will tell you about the uh, Morita equivalences of vector bundles and the underlying geometry of uh, stacky vector bundles. And finally, if time permits, uh, I will comment some ongoing words and recent words uh, on Heiger groupoids and vector bundles, some higher VB uh, groups. So to start with, let me tell you, OK, uh, something you all know. We have a, a, a Poisson manifold. Then we can be the Elie algebra. I will call it a, a sub pi on the cotangent bundle. You know? uh, the bracket is basically the by vector and the the, sorry, the, the anchor is a, the by vector, and the bracket is a fine on, on the exact forms you know, in the obvious way and then extended. But what I want to tell you about this fundamental construction is uh, the following remark. Okay, how much can we recover out of uh, a sub pi of this algebra? Does this algebra encode the whole geometry of the of the Poisson structure? Well, in some Cases, yes, for instance, if the Poisson structure is zero, or even if the Poisson structure is a, the dual of Eli algebra, then we can recover pi. In the, in the last case, I think uh, you should look at the uh, isotropy algebra on the zero, which is an isolated point. No? But in any many other cases, no. This uh, construction somehow uh, uh, lose information. For instance, if you have a symplectic manifold, the Asteroid it defines is uh, isomorphic to the tangent. So, 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 but, so sorry, Matthias, maybe, maybe I have a stupid question. So you mean recover from an algebra? You now mean just a vector bundle, a pi, or because right? Of course, if you if you have rho, which is pi sharp, I think it it doesn't code the Poisson structure entirely always. So, so you what what you would need in this case, Anton, is both. Uh, an isomorphism with T star M and another one with TM. And then you will say, okay, uh, if I read the, the vector bundle this way as a cotangent, then I have the, the by vector or the, or the form. Mm -hmm. But in principle, if I only have a, a vector bundle, which is a D algebra, and I, I, I cannot recover. Okay. There is an extra information that is saying, okay, uh, a sub pi is a cotangent. And when you say this, Mm -hmm. This information is, is okay. So uh, now, what you're talking about is just a pi itself without explicit isomorphism to T star M. The isomorphism, exactly. The isomorphism type. Okay. Yeah. And then, but then, of course, you can recover. I mean, it's, it's very subtle what I'm telling you because, of course, you can recover the whole uh, structure if you realize that uh, the, there is a compatibility between the Lie structure and the a canonical symplectic uh, 
form no? on the cotangent. So the point is, uh, Eli Ashroy has its tangent and cotangent uh, uh, spaces are actually VV algebras, vector bundle objects in the Eli Ashroy setting. And a two form uh, on A is going to, to, to be called IM, infinitesimally multiplicative, if uh, when seeing it as a map from T to T star A, is a Lie morphism. Okay, so this is just a definition, but then the, the key remark is that uh, I think it's by Enrique and Alejandro, and Enrique Wurz, Alejandro Cabrera, and Cristian Ortiz, that the canonical symplectic structure on T star M is compatible with induced Lie structure. Okay, what does IM mean? Sorry? You said it is I am in bold face. I am. I'm saying that by definition, it's saying that the, 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 the form viewed as a map from TA to T star A is it, uh, it's not just a map of vector bundle, but it's compatible with the Lie algebra structure. It's a Lie algebra morphism. But what does I am mean? Uh, infinitesimally multiplicative. Okay, that's this is the definition. Obvious. By definition, I will say that it is infinitesimally multiplicative if when looking at it, uh, when looking at it as a as a map of vector bundles, it is a map of Lie algebra. This is what I'm saying. Is it okay? Yeah, just uh, if you define that term, I missed it. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, so then the point is that, uh, I mean, uh, I guess many people work on this, but uh, I remember the work of uh, Dima Reutenberg, and then as I was mentioning, Burti and Cabrera Ortiz, I think were the first using this terminology of infinitesimally multiplicative and showing these compatibilities. We could say that Poisson structures could have a very nice interpretation it? in terms of the algebra. Why is it? Could, could, you, could, you, could you give some like an analog? Why, why, why should it be? Why, why, why you can view it as infinitesimal multiplicative if, uh, if B sharp is some, some analog? I guess you could probably doing a lower case or something, you, you see the multiplicativity. Yeah, uh, sorry, the question is uh, if I can provide some intuition of why the canonical symplectic form is compatible. This is uh, the question. No, 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 no. Like, why, why, if, uh, if, if omega, omega sharp is a VB algebra morphism, then you call it infinitesimal multiplicative. Ah, why this name? Be no, because no, no, the no. There, there must be some intuition behind it, right? So, so in yeah. a de decategorified way, it's very obvious it's multiplicative. Um, yeah, yeah but the, the point is that the uh, global counterpart of uh, algebras are groupals. And asking for a, for a two form to use a morphism of groupals from the tangent to the cotangent, it turns out to be equivalent to asking that the two form is multiplicative in the cohomological sense, let's say. The, these two things are equivalent. So that's why, if you want, we are calling this IM, because it's an infinitesimal counterpart of a the cohomological notion of multiplicative forms, okay? And then a Poisson manifold induces a Lie algebra and a symplectic form that is compatible. And conversely, if I have a symplectic a Lie algebra plus a, a closed non-degenerate non IM2 form, it, it is not hard to see that it is in fact one of this type. Uh, what you have to do is to look at the two form that is a finite isomorphism from the tangent to the cotangent on the base of these algebras. So it's, it is already telling you that the, if you have a Lie algebra with a closed non-degenerate IM2 form, then A has to be the cotangent bundle. It's just looking at the, the, the map from T to T star A on the base. And then you can see that the, the, the whole structure is uh, exactly the one that uh, we were discussing, uh, discussing before. So Poisson manifolds are the same as the algebras, coupled with a symplectic structure, compatible symplectic structure, which is, if you want, the, the, the obvious reason for which 
a symplectic group of integrate Poisson structures. This helps to, to, to connect these things if you want. But there is a homotopy version of this that is the following. A twisted Dirac manifold is the same as a real shared couple with a homotopy closed non-degenerate IM2 form. So if you start with a Lial shared, look at the compatible two form, and I demand it to be closed and non-degenerate, but I can demand a weaker versions of closeness and non-degeneracy. And then I will get a, the definition of twisted Dirac manifold. Okay. So this already uh, motivates a lot of uh, questions and, and, and things to explore. Like, uh, okay, uh, try to understand a bit more VB algebras and VB groupers. Excuse me, what uh, is the morphism? Sorry? Excuse me, what does the adjective homotopy apply to? Homotopy closed or homotopy? I, I will be more precise later, but uh, oh, okay. this is Fine. like an introduction. But I can already tell you that these VB algebras have a, an underlying two-term complex, no? sometimes called a, the tangent complex or cotangent complex in this case. But in general, you have a two-term complex underlying. And then you can look at maps of complexes uh, like are uh, homotopic no? in the usual basic uh, homological algebra sense. This is more or less idea. We will get into details later. So the first set of questions I, I have is, OK, uh, try to understand these objects, BB algeroids, their global counterpart, BB groupoids, morphisms, and uh, the lead theory they interplay. And as I was saying, these BB groupers and BB algeroids have an underlying two-term complex. In the case of the tangent of a lead groupoid, it's just the algeroid and the tangent plus the, the, the core anchor, the, 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 the anchor map. So each of these objects has a, a complex, very short complex, but a complex. So it makes sense to talk about homotopies. I will get into details later, into some details at least. And then something very interesting is, okay, talking about tensor products. How to define tensor products of EV group points? If I want to talk about two forms, I can use the exponential law to see it uh, as a map from the tangent to the cotangent. But if I want to see or to work with a three form, then I cannot escape the fact that uh, either on the left or on the right, I will have a, a, a tensor product. But what are tensor products of BB groupers and BB algebras? If this shadow of the, of the, of the BB group or BB algebra that is a two-term complex uh, is compatible with the tensor products, uh, these two-term complexes, when, when doing the tensor product, is going to give me a, a three-term complex. So we could say that there, are, there is no tensor product of BB groupers and BB algeroids, but uh, there, there has to be something there. And actually, uh, we will be led to higher versions of BB groupers. And another question I want to tell you about is, uh, okay, classify homotopy classes of BB groupers. I mean, these are a lot of natural questions among many others. Some of them are known, some, other, some of them are simpler. Uh, some of them we managed to, to answer after a lot of work, and some others are still open. But let me continue with this introduction as follows. We have Lie groupoids on the center of the screen, and I can either differentiate to a Lie algebra or take the Morita equivalence class to a differentiable stack. And this sets somehow a bridge between Lie algebra and stacks which does, doesn't work perfectly because differentiation differentiate is not invertible. We know if the algebra is, in, is integrable, there is a one-one correspondence and actually an equivalence of categories with sort of simply connected group points. So still we can do something there, but not always. And with differentiable stacks, we can also recover group points out of stacks by setting some uh, submersion present in it. I, I will get into this later. But let's say that, uh, roughly speaking, uh, a Lie group gives you a stack uh, which is covered by a versal space, by a, by a manifold upstairs. But let me give you a very simple, baby example on which this bridge works well. Flat connections on vector bundles over a manifold can be seen actually as representations of uh, the tangent bundle. And through differentiation and integration, you can see that they are in one-one correspondence with representation 
of the fundamental group, which if M happens to be uh, connected, uh, has the, 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 the underlying stack is just a, a point. I mean, it's, it is more equivalent to a point uh, and a group of isotropies. No, this uh, stack, uh, this group is more equivalent to this group. Boy. And then the line uh, stack, we will get into details later, but this the, the classifying stack. But at the end of the day, what we are saying here is that flat connections and vector bundles are the same as usual group representations of the fundamental group on a vector space. So you see that this bridge uh, uh, is not just remembering classic math. Um, generalizing the previous line, we can look at representations, Lie group representations, and in principle, naive stacky vector bundles. Okay. What happens is that this naive definition of stacky vector bundles does not include, for instance, the tangent of a, of a stack, which is quite odd. No, it's not a satisfactory. But then there is something more general than these representations, which are BB group points and BB algebras. And in a series of papers with Enrique Wurz and Alejandro Cabrera, we study this. And then. Um, it? Yeah. Sorry, just, just to make sure, at the moment, we are not supposed to understand what you're saying, right? Or just no, no, a I mean, rough right. idea of things. Okay. I'm saying that there are representations which work well, work well at the level of group points, algebras, and stacks. There are something more general, which are these vector bundles, which uh, they, uh, correspond uh, in the global and infinitesimal picture. They work well. And then if you look at this BB group points up to homotopy, you have a notion of stacky vector bundles. So I will talk about all these things in detail later. I'm just giving you a, a, a glimpse of uh, what are the objects I'm going to tell you about. Okay. So okay. the second part of the talk is going to talk about uh, this link between BB groups and BB algebras. And the third part of the talk is going to talk about this relation between BB groups and stacks. And if time permits, I will tell you a bit about some other results related with higher BB group or stacky vector bundles, etc. But as I was saying, this is related with a, a series of papers I work, uh, I, I wrote with uh, many collaborators. I want to, to remember uh, Enrique Burstin from me, Alejandro Cabrera, uh, David Stefani, uh, Christian Ortiz, uh, uh, Giorgio Trentinaglia. Uh, and Fernando Stusinski, who was a, a PhD student of Christian, and Juan de Simoni, who is currently doing the PhD thesis with me. So this was just introduction, just to give you an idea of what are the things I'm going to tell you about. I'm going to tell you about vector bundles over group points and their related geometries on the algebras and differentiable stacks, okay? which was already in the title, but this was like an extended title. So let's go with more precise definitions. What a BB groupoid is, okay? A BB groupoid is a, a depicted as a square like this. It's a compatible diagram of Lie groupoids and vector bundles. If you want, it's a Lie groupoid, another Lie groupoid, and then you have that E over M is a vector bundle, gamma over G is a vector bundle. And besides that, the Group of structure maps, which are source, target, uh, unit, multiplication, and inverse, are all linear. So uh, another way to define this is like a group of object in, in the category of vector bundles. Okay, but uh, it's better to be like this. Sorry, sorry, Matthias, just to be more precise, they're linear upstairs, right? Exactly. It's a Lie group of upstairs, a Lie group of the group of downstairs, and the structure upstairs is, is linear. With well, but to downstairs that. linear doesn't make sense, right? Up no, the, the, the upstairs is linear with respect to the, mm -hmm. the maps on the base. For instance, the source upstairs covers the source on the base. Mm -hmm. And okay. Okay. then you have to look at vector bundle maps with different base. No? And to say that the multiplication is linear, you have to look at the pair of composable arrows. 
So this is a vector bundle canonically, and then you have the multiplication upstairs and downstairs, and this is a vector bundle map. Okay. And the core, this thing that I wrote in the middle, is a hidden piece of data that is defined in the same fashion you define the Lie algebra of a B of a of a Lie group. You look at the source upstairs, look at the kernel and restrict to the unit. The kernel of the source restricted to the unit. And what is happening is that, in fact, if you restrict any Lie group to the base, you do the pullback of the BB group, you get a BB group over a manifold. And what is, what is a BB group over a manifold? Uh, there you can apply classic dual can correspondence and you, get, you will get a two term chain complex of vector bundles. Okay? So this two term chain complex of vector bundles has. On degree zero, the side bundle. On degree one, this core that is somehow hidden. No? But then uh, uh, this is only if you restrict to the units. There is something more. You should think that a vector bundle, usual vector bundle of manifolds, is a family of vector spaces parameterized by, by the base manifold. No? Then a VB group, what is a VB group? Is something where you categorify both the base and the fiber. It's a family of two vector spaces, or if you want to turn complexes of vector spaces or category objects on vector spaces. These are the fibers, and they are parameterized by a Lie group. What does it mean that for each point of the group, I have a two vector space, and for each arrow of the of the group, I have a, a morphism. No, between the, the two vects, which are the fibers. So let me tell you some examples of it. Of course, tangent, if, if I apply the tangent of a group, I have a VV group. Everything is linear. But something. Could I just ask a question? Yeah. Um, so in a vector bundle, there's some very basic invariant of the vector bundle, which is its rank. So should I think in terms of there being a pair of ranks which is lying underlying the theory, or you don't think of it that way? I mean, I would have thought the dimension, the rank of gamma and the rank of E are part of the uh, lying in the background. Yeah, sure. Yes. Uh, these two ranks are very important. Um, uh, I will come to this. Uh, but the reason the I'm day. saying that is because I'm guessing that if I fix the rank, then there's a, going to be a classifying a classifying stack for yeah, the group this is right? Something I want to tell you about. Oh, yeah. okay, Frank. If, okay. if you fix the, the rank of the map, things yeah. get very simpler. But if the oh, rank- not the rank of the map, just yeah. the, the dimension of the vector bundles. That's all exactly, I want. Exactly, exactly. I will write to them P and Q in general, to the oh, ranks. Oh, good, okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. And right. Uh, something important is that, is that P is always greater than, uh, sorry, Oh, hang uh, on. P you and see Q that are the, the rank same. of gamma is P plus Q. No? Exactly. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, but I will look at P and Q. And when yes. P is zero, mm -hmm. then it's not hard to see that what you get is a representation. Yeah. It's the same as a representation. When the core is zero, you can uh, read because you have a, a the, the source map from gamma to E uh, is a fiberwise anisomorphism in this case when C is zero, when there is no kernel. So then you can think of it as a pullback of vector bundles. Mm -hmm. And when you identify gamma with a pullback vector bundle, then you, you get a recover the usual notion. You have just to unravel the definitions and of a representation of a, vector, of a Lie group in a vector bundle. Mm -hmm. But the tangent and cotangent group are not, in general, with trivial core. For instance, the core of the tangent is the Lie algebra, and the core of the cotangent is a Cotangent manifold. This is funny that the, the tangent and the, the, the core and the side bundle uh, change roles in duality. There is a duality theory for BB groups, which is far from trivial, but uh, it works perfectly. I mean, it's, it's far from trivial, but tautological. <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe trivial is not a good part, uh, uh, word. It is not evident, but it is taut tautological. I mean, you unravel things and you can see that this. There is a duality theory there. But you should think of EV group as tangent and cotangent are examples, the representations too, 
but they are something more general than representations. And in fact, you can see that BB group points correspond to representations up to homotopy. What is a representation up to homotopy for any group point on a two term graded vector bundle? Well, it's going to give for each point on the base of the group boy a differential, for each arrow on the group boy, a, this is a commutative square, no, a map of chain complexes, of two term chain complexes. And then for each pair of composable arrows, I will have a, a chain homotopy. What does it mean? That in the base, I have three arrows, no? uh, G, H, and H, G. And then I have the three fibers. But these fibers are, are two vector spaces, no? are category objects, if you, if you want to forget about the linear structure. But then you get a, an object here. You can do some parallel transport using the representation of the homotopy through G, then through H, and then through the composition. And then you get some sort of curvature. This need not to be the same point. And even if it is the same point, this, the triangle does not need to commute. So the failure of this commutativity is a measure by this chain of homotopy. Okay. This, the, this whole set of data is a representation of the homotopy on a two-term vector bundle. And then the theorem of Afonso and, and, and Raj is that there is a correspondence between representation of the homotopy of two terms and BB group points. And the first time I remember knowing about this, 2011, when I first moved to Rio de Janeiro and, and Raj was around, and he told me about this and I said, ah, okay, so this is grotesque correspondence, no, between a set of factors and fiber categories, but uh, adding up uh, linearity and smoothness and uh, demanding the base to be a, 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 a group point. There is a question on the chat by Jim. Ah, let me see. Uh, no higher homotopies because there are only two levels. Exactly, Jim. In principle, you can do the same definition for a, a arbitrary graded vector bundle, but if you do it with two levels, you have only these homotopies, but then you you what you gain is a, an equation. These three things have to be a, a compatible in certain sense, no? The yeah. only missing compatibility, I think, is that the, these chain homotopies for each triple of composable arrows have to give a, a commutative a tetrahedron. No? Good. So, uh, as I was saying, this is known for category theories as a correspondence between fiber categories and, and, and pseudo functors. And it was a bit of the, 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 the proposal of, of Grotendieck of, okay, let's study uh, fiber categories instead of pseudo functors. Because if you look at the pseudo functor, you need to keep track of all the, the, the homotopies, no? the, the structure two cells that are uh, measuring or controlling the lack of associativity. But if you look at it as a vibration, then this is implicit. And then when you break the, the, the vibration, you have to choose what a grotten called a cleavage, um, this SGA one. No? And when you choose a cleavage, it's like putting coordinates on a manifold, okay? Then uh, you will gain a pseudo functor, but it's not intrinsic, okay? So as I was saying, from representations up to homotopy to BB groupoids, you do some semi direct product. If you take the case of groups instead of groupoids, this gives you a semi direct product uh, twisted by a, a, a cos cycle. No? The cos cycle would be the, 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 the homotopy. But and the other way around, if you have a BB groupoid, you have to pick a cleavage. In this case, we will demand the cleavage to be smooth and linear. And what is a cleavage? It's a choice. For each G, for each B, I will pick a lift of this arrow to an arrow on the total groupoid with source V. No? Once you pick the cleavage, you can decompose a, the BB groupoid as a, as a representation up to homotopy. And this gives you a one-one correspondence. Okay. So what are BB algebras? I'm not going to tell you much details because 
I don't have time for that, but it's like the infinitesimal analog of VB groupoids. Before talking about VB algebras, you need to talk about double vector bundles, which are, if you want, a particular case of VB groupoids, when you look at vector bundles as Lie groupoids with a, a fiberwise addition, okay? So they do have a core. But you can also say the horizontal linear structure given by projection, zero section, sum, and multiplication by scalar is linear for the other structure. But what is quite surprising is that the double vector bundle has two duals, the vertical and the horizontal, and these two duals are in a canonical pairing, okay? Like uh, you look uh, this over C, and this over C, and there is a pairing relating them. So instead of talking of duality, we should talk about triality of double vector bundles. And then we can define a VB algeroid playing with the duality between uh, Lie algeroids and linear Poisson structures by saying that uh, if you have a double vector bundle and a double linear Poisson structure, then the dual is a VB algeroid. This is going to be the definition, okay? And it's equivalent to the definitions that uh, uh, appear in the literature, for instance, in the work of Mackenzie and collaborators. So, examples are the tangent, the cotangent, representations. There is a characterization via representation up to homotopy, also by Gracia Sasa and, and Meta. And there is a very nice approach also using the bile algebra of a double vector bundle that recently appeared by Meinrecken and, and, and Pike and Chef Pike. But let me tell you a bit how to relate, how did uh, we relate VB groupers and VB algebras by recovering a very simple fact of vector bundles over manifolds. In a vector bundle over a manifold, you have a zero section, a multiplication by scalars, fiberwise addition, but everything can be recovered from the multiplication by scalars. If you just remember the, the action of the multiplicative monoid, and you demand it to be regular in, in the following sense, that this equation only vanishes for fixed points. Then you recover the base of the vector bundle as this fixed point. And then you, you can uh, uh, recover the fiberwise addition from the tangent. This, in the case in which uh, there is only one fixed point, is very simple. It's just saying that the, there is a, an identification between a vector space and the tangent at the origin, okay? And what, how do you do that? You pick a vector, you take the line generated by this vector, and then you look at the speed at, at time zero. And, and this gives you a way to characterize vector bundles in the smooth setting, just as regular actions of the multiplicative monoid. So what we did after that, we showed that VB groupers and VB algeroids can be characterized as regular actions, which are compatible with the groupoid and algebraic structure, okay? Uh, this is kind of a, an orthogonal movement to the representation of the homotopy, no? Because instead of focusing on the base, now we are focusing on the total space. But uh, this works and give us what we were looking for, which is a way to differentiate and integrate BB algebras and BB groupers. We can always differentiate a VB groupoid. And if the top algeroid of a VB algeroid is integrable, then we can integrate the whole structure. And how to do that? Basically integrating actions. And how to do that? Basically integrating maps using Li2. Sorry, maybe I, we should throw in the, the proposition, I believe, is due to Grabowski and Rodkiewicz, isn't it? Uh, Grabowski. Uh, uh, and Rodkiewicz. Thank you. They have worked, have been exp uh, uh, exploring you know, and, and taking advantage of the characterization of the vector bundles using the multiplicative, uh, the, the action of the multiplicative monoid. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it was uh, Eka, no? I'm sorry about the uh, forgetting the reference. So, what we did basically was taking the characterization that Grabowski and Rodkwek uh, wrote for manifolds and that they used for double vector bundles, et cetera, uh, to the case of BB groupers and BB algebras. And then 
a bunch of applications pop up out of this. Uh, like uh, Dirac uh, structures and foliations on group boys, Christian Ortiz and Madeline were studying this. Two term representations up to homotopy can be integrated and differentiated, just combining our result with the, the results of Grasses and Meta. Double E groupoids and double E algeroids. The differentiation of these objects is a two step differentiation. You have to differentiate first horizontally and then vertically, or the other way around. And then the first stage of this integration procedure is somehow covered by our theory. The second case is way more delicate. And um, recently, we wrote another paper with uh, uh, Enrique and Alejandro uh, looking at double, Poisson double groupers and Poisson double algebras. Roughly speaking, if you have these double vector bundles that come in triples, if you have a one Poisson structure in one of them, the others are BV algebras. If you have two Poisson structures in, in two of them, then you, got, you get this double E algeroids that uh, Mackenzie was studying during several years. And when you put three Poisson structures on a double vector bundle, one on D, one on D star, and one on D, not uh, the point, whatever, then you get this Poisson double algeroids. But this is enough for the Lee theory, just giving a glimpse at the theory. We can discuss about this later. But let me get into multi equivalence of vector bundle, which is from Lee groupoids. First, I moved to Lee algeroids, and now I'm moving from Lee groupoids to uh, differentiable stacks. So, I guess many of you know very well what a differentiable stack is, but many of you don't work with this thing. So, let me give you just a, a, a quick overview on the subject. What is a stack? A stack roughly speaking, is a shift of groupoids. It's a locally determined factor, pseudo factor, from manifolds to groupoids. So the idea is that this can be worked out in very general context. No, if you have a Grothendieck site and uh, you look at factors on, on, on a, a, a category of, of groupoids or, or linear groups or whatever, then you can make sense of this. But then uh, what is a presentation? Uh, how this stack appeared originally? Maybe the most important one is mapping M to vector bundles over M. So to each manifold, you give a groupoid, which vector bundles with the morphism of, of isomorphism of, of vector bundles over M. And then to each map from a manifold to another, I have the pullback of vector bundles. And then it is not good to say that the pullback of the pullback is a pullback, because uh, this only makes sense if you fix isomorphisms. No, and then you cannot fix the whole pullbacks in a in a reasonable way, in a coherent way. It's like uh, taking the cleavage. It's actually the same as taking the cleavage I was mentioning before. It's like uh, demanding to have a connection. No, and, 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 and we don't do that. No? For instance, when you have a vector bundle and you have a submanifold, you will not construct the pullback as a subspace of the fiber of, of the Cartesian product. No, you take just the, the, the pre-image. No? So in any case, a stack appears typically when working with a moduli problems. And what is a presentation of a stack? It's a submersion from a manifold. So this space M is a versal space. It covers every instance of the, of the classification problem, but with multiplicity. No? And we are going to say that if F admits a presentation, then it is a differentiable stack. This is going to be the definition. Okay. And then a Lie groupoid induces an orbit stack. Okay. Basically, using the representing. No, looking at objects, it maps into M, arrows map into G. This is not a stack, it's a press stack, but then you shift, take the associated shift, let's say, and then you get a stack. But I want to you to, to look at this in a very 
uh, uh, simple way without getting into details. What I'm saying is that you have Lie group points and differentiable stacks, and there is no precise correspondence. It's not that one corresponds to the other. Uh, it's like uh, things don't match exactly. But this is not bad, actually, because uh, gives give us a, a richer theory or, or many ways to think at it. In this diagram, the horizontal lines are equivalents of categories, loosely speaking. So what is a presented stack is the same as a Lie groupoid. I can recover the original groupoid by taking at the, the canonical projection from M into M over G and taking the iterated fiber products of this map to itself. So you have a Lie groupoid is the same as a stack together with a presentation. But if you are going to look at Lie groupoids modular monolith equivalences, then you get differentiable stacks. What does it mean, this modulo? It's a localization. I'm localizing uh, by category, by certain arrows, which are those that are mapped into isomorphism. So it's a bit tricky, but this is just to motivate that instead of going the, the, in the classic construction of Grotendieck to stacks, I have a, another approach using groupoids and Morita equivalences. Um, I should mention that uh, the first talking about differential stacks were uh, K. Beren and Bing Shu, but much of this is based on work by Ike Murday. And as I was saying, the, these two lines says that the, the two horizontal arrows are equivalences, let's say. And when what I want to say is that to, stu to study stacks, which are these uh, singular quotients, to do differential geometry over them, I need to work with Lie groupoids, modulo, uh, an equivalence relation, which, which can be presented either by, by bundles or Morita morphisms of maps, weak equivalences, if you want. So what is a weak equivalence between groupoids? It's a morphism of groupoids, which is fully faithful and essentially surjective. In category theory, we first learned that a, a functor that is fully faithful and essentially surjective is an equivalence. You can define a pseudo inverse, a quasi-inverse. But in this case, if you if we want to pick a, a, an inverse a, a, a continuously uh, or smoothly, then these things are not equivalent. Okay? So smoothly, fully faithful, and essentially subjective is less than having a quasi-inverse. And I think that the best way to depict this is with a simple example. Think of a submersion of a manifold over another. Then you have two groupers. The group of upstairs is a equivalence relation defined on M by the fibers. And the groupoid downstairs is the unit groupoid. Then this projection phi is going to be an isomorphism of groupoids if pi is a diffeomorphism. This phi is going to be an equivalence, meaning that there is a functor the other way around. Um, the both compositions are isomorphic to, to the identities if pi admits a global section. And it's going to be Morita or a weak equivalence if pi is surjective. Okay. So you see that these three things are very different. Um, a thing I did when I first studied these things is to write these global conditions in a more uh, naive or, or local way. And it turns out that you can say that a smoothly fully faithful and essentially subjective is exactly the following. Being a set theoretically fully faithful and essentially subjective plus one condition, that is this one on the bottom, that the, the, the morphism of groupoids uh, meets transversally every orbit. This is the only differential geometry you need to, to, to make it a smoothly, fully faithful, and essentially subject. Okay. And then there are these morphisms that I want to treat them as isomorphisms. And then what I want to do is to localize. Without talking about localizations, I'm going to say that the two groupoids define the same 
orbit space if there are two Morita morphisms like here. And I will write M over C and M line over C line. But let me go back to this characterization to give you an intuition of what, how can I think of the stack as a geometric object? Is the orbit space, topological space, with parametrizing a family of groups, which are the isotopy groups, okay? But there is some X information, no? smooth information there, which allows me to do differential geometry on the quotient. So examples of stacks for those that maybe are not very familiar with this. Okay, manifolds can be seen as stacks via the unit groupers. But then when I look at the Lie group, which is a group with a single object, and the associated stack is a classified stack that solves the moduli problem of vector bundles. This classified stack classifies Vector band, if I pick no a GLN, no, the general linear group. If, if not, it's going to classify a principal G bundles. Okay. And it is very good this because it is a finite dimensional model, unlike the, the Milner classified space, which is infinite dimension. Uh, an action group, if you have a group K acting on a manifold M, gives you an action group, and the associated group. A stack is a model, a finite dimensional model for Borel's recipe on equivalent cohomology. When you study equivalent cohomology, you learn that to compute it, you have to do a bunch of computation. No, pick a, a very big space, do the partition product, act with the group diagonally, etc. But then this is a finite dimensional alternative. Um, well, all befalls are examples with, of, of, of stacks. And in fact, even though Satake introduced orbifolds uh, uh, with uh, charts, when you want to define in, in, a, in, a, in an efficient way uh, morphisms, maps of orbifolds, you, are, you, you need to do it uh, using groupers. I mean, uh, any other definition is going to uh, carry some complications. And then you can make sense of these spaces, etc. Uh, so, what is the geometry of a stack? Is any geometry of the groupoid that is preserved by the Morita morphisms? And some examples are representations, homology, being proper. Being proper of a groupoid means that the underlying stack is Hauser somehow. And then, after this, uh, general uh, notions of stack, let me tell you about stacks. And BB group points. What we do there? Uh, well, we look at uh, the, our first result with Christian was showing that a map of BB group points is uh, an equivalence if and only if it is on the base and it is fiber wise. Re remembering that the fibers are, are two vector spaces. No? Category object in two vector spaces. I'm, I'm using, let's say, I don't know if they were the first, but Bynes and, and Kranz notion of two-vector space. Uh, and then we can define the derived category of VB group points just by formally inverting this uh, linear Morita morphism, or linear, uh, linear equivalences. Just that in this case, since everything is very rigid, you know that a VB group is the base plus linear information, no? two-vector bundles and a representation of two homotopy. In this very particular situation, there are quasi inverses. This is something already noticed with another language, but uh, by uh, Abad and Kreinig, when they talk about uh, representation up to homotopy, when they introduce representation up to homotopy of the group. And something that for me is a bit uh, curious, I don't understand it very well, but uh, two BB groupoids are going to be. Uh, equivalent in the, the right category if there are acyclic BB groupoids, meaning that the, the core anchor map or the, the two-term complex is, is uh, without homology, no? the map from C to E is an isomorphism, there is no homology, such that you have sort of a stabilization. If I can sum up two acyclic groupoids 
and then I got a, I have an isomorphism. Then they were uh, equivalent, but the other way around also holds. And our second result with Christian was to show that when you pull back BB groupoids along a Morita morphism, you get an equivalence of the derived categories of BB groupoids. So we can talk about stacky vector bundles because it doesn't it doesn't matter what group we use to model a differential stack. The category of BB groupoids over it is is well defined. The derived category of BB groupoids. So some consequences of this is Moritian bias of two-term representation up to homotopy, just combining with the results of uh, as a meta. But I should mention that uh, when Camilo, Arezabal, and Maris Fenick introduced representations up to homotopy, they conjectured like uh, 10 years ago, ah, we expect for this representation up to homotopy to be Moritian invariant. But up to now, there is no proof for this. We know for two term representation up to homotopy, and we have some ideas for the general case. But it's something that is somehow open to prove the Moritian invariance of representations up to homotopy. This also relates with the Moritian invariance of the formation cohomology, because the deformation cohomology of any groupoid can be interpreted as a, the cohomology of a BB groupoid, of the cotangent BB groupoid. And this related to the, the actually, those who introduced the deformation cohomology of Lili group of Lili groupoids are Marius, Joan, Nuno Mestre, and, and Ivan Struciner. Yes. Yeah. The, there is a question of uh, Dima Reutenberg on the chat. Could you? Yeah, sorry. I need to look here. I am localizing uh, as a category baby steps, let's say. No? I agree with you that there is higher information and we should keep track of it. But uh, as a first approach to the theory, uh, I localize it as a, as a one category. So to be precise, to do this localization, I have to first identify the, the morphism of BB groupers, which are homotopic. No? And then it turns out that uh, you don't need to do anything else. So there is no localization at the end of the day. Uh, it agrees with localization, which is something good, because uh, we want to, to, to have this. But uh, since every weak equivalence has a quasi inverse, it's just modeling out by, by homotopies. OK? This is the localization in this case. Uh, sure, thanks. Yeah, I understand. And yeah. And then uh, I was saying that uh, this gives us a very simple approach to integration of the direct structures. This uh, beautiful work by uh, Enrique Burti, Marius, Alan Weinstein, and, and Chen Chang. Uh, because what can we say from our perspective? What is a Dirac structure? A Dirac structure is a Lee algebra plus a infinitesimally multiplicative uh, two form, which is closed. I will demand this on the nose. Otherwise, I need to talk about a twisted Dirac structure. No, but for the for, for now, let me talk about a closed and the non-degeneracy. Instead of demanding this to be an isomorphism, I can ask for it to induce an isomor a quasi-isomorphism on the two-term complexes. And this is a direct structure, OK? A homotopy symplectic Lie algebra. And then how to integrate this? You integrate the algebra if it is integrable to a groupoid. You integrate the two form using Lie2. And since it was a, a closed, the form integrating it is going to be closed. This integration and differentiation of multiplicative and infinitesimally multiplicative forms was largely covered by a series of papers by, by Enrique Burstein, Alejandro Cabrera, Thiago Dumont, and some others. And the fact of being a quasi isomorphism, no, which would be like a weak uh, non degenerate, is perfectly preserved because when you differentiate a BB groupoid, the core is preserved. And the side is preserved, and the core anchor map is preserved. So this underlined 
complex expression. So it also gives us a notion of a tangent and cotangent stack. I remember a first naive definition of this uh, vector bundles over stacks on this book by, by uh, K. Beren, Greg Chinot, Nudi, and, and Pin Shu, where they say, okay, uh, we work with uh, representations which are more invariant and they induce tangent, uh, induce vector uh, bundles over stacks. But they say, okay, but the tangent is not an example. And they are right because typically you may have a core. No, so that, uh, this naive definition is bad because you don't have the tangent of a stack. But then we introduce with Christian this notion of, okay, the Morita invariance class of the, of the TGTM, and this is going to be the, the, the tangent stack. Of course, was nothing, nothing surprising, but I think our work showing that this is a Morita invariant, et cetera, somehow gives support on this definition. That is the actual notion of uh, stacky vector bundles. Um, recently, there is another paper by them uh, where they uh, do an alternative approach to our uh, to the object which we have defined. No? Um, well, I am running out of time. So let me just mention very quickly uh, in, in just a couple of words and other, other things I am working or I have work related to it. One, well, uh, I should say that uh, I will use simplicial manifolds to model higher group points. Um, thinking that every time I choose a feeling, I am defining a composition. You should... Uh, relate this with the idea of picking a cleavage. When you choose feelings, you are putting coordinates, you are making uh, choices. And keeping track of all these choices is very expensive. Does not go in the direction of a uh, grotting spirit, let's say. So uh, these uh, weakly and group boys are, uh, and if, if you drop out the word Lee, the, this weak group boys, uh, I don't know, if, if the person who introduced them is, is uh, Joyal, but I learned about them with Joyal, with Andre Joyal. Uh, rapidly, no, Jacob Luri uh, adopted it and, and popularized around. Um, what we show with Davide Stefani, a former student of, of Greg Chino in, in Jussier, is that when you take a strict need to group boy and compute the nerve, which is a nerve by a street, where you put instead of triangle of commutative triangles, you put commutative triangles up to homotopy. Then what you get is a well defined simplicial manifold and actually a weak little group. So we show that street net actually gives a, a, a bridge, a connection between strict two group points and weak two group points. Thank you very much for the reference. The contact is due to Dask, not Shoyal. Thank you, Ezra. Um, then uh, what we did with uh, Davide, we showed that uh, we managed to build this general linear two groupoid, which is a lead two groupoid whose objects are, uh, I start with a two term gradient vector bundle. And then I take objects, the differentials on the fibers, arrows, chain maps between the fibers, and two cells, chain homotopies. Well, what we showed is that this actually gives you a lead to group point, okay? A strict in the sense that there is a composition, but not so strict because not every arrow is invertible. Arrows are invertible only up to homotopy, okay? Because a, a chain map, which is a quasi isomorphism, chain maps, a quasi isomorphism. If we don't ask for the quasi isomorphism thing, uh, it is not a, a manifold, but uh, when we demand the quasi-somorphism hypothesis, it's an open condition and it gets a, there are two conditions. No, one open that is being a quasi-somorphism and one closed that is the, the, the square has to commute. And this closed and open condition uh, relates well and we get a little groupoid 
which classifies representations up to homotopy over the fixed groupoid. We fix a groupoid and then you get a one-one -one correspondence between representation up to homotopy and set of factors into the general linear to group. Work. Not any pseudo factor, it has to be such that uh, when you project over M is identity, but uh, this idea. And then we recently look at it at the level of stacks. And it is quite tricky because we need to talk about two stacks and the theory of two stacks, when you enter into the details, is, is uh, there are many things to be checked. I will finish in a minute, sorry. So classification of stacky vector bundles, and maybe this related to what Ezra was mentioning. Uh, I will say that the lag factor between lead to group points is Morita if it meets transversely every orbit and it is locally Morita. This is kind of minimalistic because I'm looking just at the zero level, asking to intersect every orbit transversally and asking to, once I fix the two objects, I have a, a, a category, a group of arrows. No? And I ask that at this local level, it has to be Morita. But then we managed to show with Juan de Simoni, my, my student, that uh, this definition, in the particular case, when you get a sub subjective submersion on the base, you can take the nerve and get the hypercovers, for instance, studied in this context by Chen Chang. And when it is a subjective submersion, Oh, oh, it looks like we lost him. He's back. <clears throat> uh -huh. Please unmute yourself. Hi, sorry. Uh, I don't know what happened, uh, but uh, I was just finishing. Can I make use of a, an extra minute? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, is my screen being shared? No. No. Okay. I need to find the, the book here. Share. Uh, screen. Start. Perfect. Um, I was just finishing. Sorry. I don't know when did you lose me, but I was saying that we have a, a notion of a equivalence between lead to group boys that is compatible with those of, of Chen Chang and, and um, uh, Greg uh, and Matthew, and then we work out the, the, the in a reasonable way the generalities of uh, two stacks and map of two stacks, and what we gain using the general linear two group boy is this theorem classifying stacky vector bundles by what we call the category five Grassmannian. What is the category five Grassmannian? It's just taking RP plus RQ over the point. This is uh, a let's say basic, uh, basic uh, uh, two-term graded vector space. No? Has one dimension P, one dimension Q. And I can build the general linear two group point, which will have several objects because an object there is a, a map from RP, to R, uh, from RP to RQ, is a differential. And then there are several arrows and two cells. This object, we call it GLPQ. And the two stack induced by it is what we call the category five Grassmannian. And then the map of two stacks from G to GLPQ are the, in, in one correspondence with a, a objects in the right category of BB group points. When you set P equals zero, this is just the usual classification of vector bundles by the classifying stack. 
And this open, opens up the opportunity to define the universal algebra of characteristic classes of stacky vector bundles. Just take the Boltzmann cohomology of this very simple, concrete, finite dimensional object. You take RP, RQ, you have a, the manifold of, of objects, which is RPQ. Then you have the committed to squares there, which has to fulfill a closed condition and open condition. And then you have a, two cells. Um, and the cohomology of this object is a universal algebra of characteristic classes, because any then doing the pullback along the, the classifying map, we are going to have the classifying the characteristic classes of any BB group. We hope to be able to apply this to, to, to Poisson geometry. We haven't reached that point yet. I should finish here. Sorry about the extra time. Just in a one second mention that I have done related work with Giorgio exploring higher analogs of BB group boys. Giorgio Trentinaglia from IST, Lisbon. And also with Christian Ortiz, uh, Fernando Stusinski here in Brazil, Sao Paulo. We explore what about, uh, try to uh, provide some more uh, advance in the more it invariants of representation of two homotopy of higher degrees. Thank you, and um, that's all. Thanks a lot. Yeah, so thank you, Matthias. Uh, questions or comments? Yeah, so Ezra, you, 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 you raised I have raised my hand. Yeah. Uh, let me lower it. Um, what is the cohomology of the PQ classifying space? <laughs> I asked that to my I asked that to my student and he hasn't answered yet. Yeah. <laughs> we um, know yeah. yeah. We want to compute it and, and because it's very concrete. Even in the case on which P and Q are one one, no? And we managed to identify certain important classes. But something I can tell you, for instance, related to it, is that when your BV groupoid uh, has a map that has constant rank, okay? Well, in this case, uh, we can compute a, a very particular characteristic class, which is a, a version of the Dixmian uh, Duami class for, for gerbs. And uh, in this case, we recovered the, the, the class, the characteristic class of the BB groupoid that was already studied in the work of uh, Russian Meta and Afonso Gracia Sass. They study, they have a, a section on, the, on their paper that says, okay, we were going to study the model space of BB groupoids, but they only tackle the, the, the constant rank case and they identify that there is a class, a, a, a two cohomology class. So if I could um, make a comment, if I could yeah. make a comment then, the constant rank case may be related to how uh, many people have looked at this cohomology question, but in the derived geometry setting. And I think that the restriction to the constant rank case may be related more to the derived geometry case. Whereas when the rank is varying, uh, the derived geometry calculation in some sense smooths out this problem by rendering this map um, constant rank in a sense. Um, so the, the non-derived geometry case, I, maybe you don't know them, but, uh, I've forgotten his name, but um, there was a student of uh, Kapranov who with Kapranov wrote a paper on, on these questions. So I, I'll just remind I, I would love to, to know more I about it. If you so... look for a published paper of Kapranov, you'll find something about, uh, about this, these Grassmannians. Um, I would love to know more about it, uh, Ezra. Yeah. What I yeah. can say well, uh, yeah. is that uh, at some point, when I was first studying a uh, category five vector spaces, for instance, two vector spaces, I remember uh, uh, giving some attention to the work of Kapranov and Wojewski, but uh, they, they oh, have no, another no, approach, no? no. no, no. no to, this, is, this is decades later. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let me and see. what they what? have is something very different. Yeah. No? And, and, uh, well, it's a very specific. Let me let me see. Well, other people are looking, are talking, okay. uh, asking questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Luca. 
Uh, hi, Matthias. Uh, I have uh, two probably stupid questions. So th the first one is about your uh, geometric characterization of Morita maps. I was wondering whether one can uh, an infinitesimal variant of that one to define Morita maps of the algebraids. Okay, uh, Luca, uh, regarding to this first question, uh, I think it's a very good question. <laughs> And I should mention uh, uh, the work of Olivier Braig, no? because he has explored, uh, he, he's uh, here in Curitiba, in, in Brazil, and uh, he has explored uh, the, the, this notion of homotopy between Lee, uh, Lee Alcherts. But to be honest, I haven't uh, moved much in, in, in this direction, but uh, in fact, this is very important because uh, if you lost him again, I'm afraid yes. Yeah, he's frozen. Sorry. Yeah. I think I lost my connection, but uh, yeah, 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 right. We, we we haven't heard what you said. So you, you should probably repeat. Yeah. No, but the first question, Luca, the first question, what I remember is that the, the you talk about a homotopy between the algebras, something like this. No? Right, yeah. And My question was more, more specific. If you could take advantage of your characterization of Morita maps, because that's have an obvious infinitesimal version. Uh, yeah, I think uh, you're right. I haven't explored this. Uh, but I think uh, you're right. Uh, like saying, uh, if you have a, an isomorphism, uh, uh, it, if it meets transversally every orbit, um, no, and, and the, the thing then, yeah, it should be explored, Luca. I, I don't know, but I know, I, I wanted to mention the work of Olivier that is related to, to, to this notion of homotopies between the algebra and morphism. Okay. Yeah, and the second question? Yeah, uh, so did I understand correctly that you said that the Vibio Morita map is always a strong equivalent, so you can quasi-inverse? Yeah, in the, in the following sense, that uh, you have GM, and let's say you have a VB group boy and another one, oops. And you have a map here. If it is uh, Morita or Vivi Morita, linear you Morita. You mean covering the identity? Covering the identity, exactly. Yeah. And this construction is classic in, in algebraic topology. Uh, you, let's say you have a map from X to Y, no? And then you factor it through the canonical vibration, no? And then any map is factored through an inclusion which has a, a, an inverse, a topological homotopical inverse and then a vibration okay and this when you do this canonical uh, uh, construction of the associated vibration of abstract topology in the context of BB groupoids you realize that the this submersion here uh, on the right uh, has to be a split I mean you can see that it is split so it has a an acyclic kernel um, so you can go back, okay? And if you do this, so, sorry, just, just the last little thing. If you do this for a, for a quasi-symplectic group point, so for, for the shard map of a quasi-symplectic structure on the group point, I mean, can you get a quasi-poisson uh, structure out of I'm not of sure. Uh, what, what do you mean by quasi-symplectic? Sorry. Maybe you call it another. Uh, so I'm using this uh, the shoe terminology. Ah, so yeah, the, the pin shoe term. Yeah, if you take a quasi-symplectic groupoid and you differentiate it, yeah, so the, the it shard is, map of omega is of the of the symplectic structure is VB Morita, right? Exactly. So can you invert it to get a quasi-Poisson structure? Uh, exactly, a Dirac structure. Yeah, exactly. This is like a, a simple way to 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 recover that theory. Uh, I mean, I don't know where it is written. It should be written someplace. But when we work with Christian, uh, recovery and based on all these 
uh, references, no, no, we was, wrote I'm... the characterization of a Dirac structure as Elia Schroy plus, uh, at least in our paper, it is done and, and it is implicit I in know, the literature. I was, I was asking mm -hmm. about the inverse. So can you invert ah. this, this ah, special I, Now I understand, sorry. I understand your question is way more interesting than what I was thinking. Uh, yeah, because uh, I don't know. <laughs> Again, a, a very nice question. We can discuss it <laughs> at some point. Okay, I would love thank you very much. Yeah. Hey, thanks, thank you. More questions or comments? May I have a comment? Sure. Uh, so we did, we introduced with Rodkiewicz this characterization of vector bundles via multiplication by reals, actually in order to simple characterization of double vector bundles. Namely, a double vector bundle is a manifold equipped with two vector bundle structures, which are compatible, which in this language means that the, the multiplication by reals in these two vector bundles commute. And this is all. This gives you exactly the double vector bundles. Moreover, this characterization has a natural and easy generalizations. So instead, uh, so you can just skip the assumption that your monoid action of multiplicative reals is regular. So you, we have a, a local description of all possible action of multiplicative reals. And this leads to a certain uh, objects we called graded bundles, but be careful, they are not graded vector bundles. The, the, the canonical models are higher tangent bundles, which are not vector bundles, of course. Um, and again, even for these more general objects, so graded bundles, we can uh, easily define double, triple, et cetera, graded bundles uh, by assuming that we have a number of uh, actions which are commuting in pairs. So uh, again, this, this leads easily to a concept like double VB groupoids where you have actually two vector bundle uh, structures on a groupoid uh, which are compatible in the sense they commute and which are compatible in, with the groupoid structure, which means that they act as groupoid morphies. So it seems that this is quite convenient in many uh, instances to use exactly this, this characterization. Thank you. I, I completely agree, Janus. I like it very much. Uh, and I also, I, I was going to mention what uh, you just said, that when you drop uh, away the condition of regularity, you gain something very nice, which is this uh, higher analogs, no? uh, resembling the, the uh, graded manifolds. No? And in fact, I think that uh, when you combine uh, this multiplication by scalars with the uh, with the odd coordinates, no, you get the, the usual notion of graded manifolds, at least when the, the grading uh, is compatible with the, with the parity. I remember learning a lot about this with uh, Dima Reutenberg. I'm pretty sure he can explain these things better than me, but uh, I, I, I loved it to, to, I learned about all these things by reading uh, the work of Janus Grabowski and, and his colleagues. And, and, very glad about it, having this opportunity. Thank you. Uh, more questions or comments for Matthias? Uh, Dima? Uh, yes, uh, hello, my uh, audible and visible. Yeah, I was, uh, uh, hi everyone. Uh, hi, Matthias. Um, hi, Dima. I was just, yeah, if, if I may try to answer uh, Lucas' first question uh, in the negative, actually. Um, 
that uh, uh, C, uh, well, uh, Lee groupoids are in a way that there are one homotopy types, you know, sheafified, but Lee algebroids are infinite homotopy types. So uh, uh, if one does what uh, what Lucas suggests, uh, you know, just differentiate this great criterion of a weak equivalence of groupoids uh, to get something for Lee algebroids, that, uh, 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 what will happen is that you'll miss the higher homotopy information. Um, Right, so uh, like the homotopy types of the orbits uh, uh, will be completely missing then. So this uh, the, the, the Lie group point of a Lie algebra, it's kind of like it's it's one truncation of its homotopy type. Uh, so what you get is a you know, it, it, it is, is a weaker uh, equivalence than uh, than you should. I mean, unless you're only interested in kind of like this uh, one truncation and and just nullifying all the higher uh, homotopy groups. So I don't know if uh, uh, hopefully th this makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it makes sense. I, I need to think about it uh, uh, in private, <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I, I think you you have a point there. Okay. So thank you, Dima. Uh, yeah, I don't know whether there are more questions or comments. If, uh, if that's not the case, uh, thanks again, Matthias. Okay, thank you, everybody. And uh, next week, I think it's Pavel Minerv who is speaking on Long Poisson. So thank you again.